So before we start, this video will not contain any spoilers and will be a mix of my early gameplay and Nintendo trailers. Also, this will probably be a very short video since I haven't beaten the game yet, but I really wanted to give my first impressions of Tears of the Kingdom. Like I said, I'm still currently playing through the game and I will have a review up when I'm done. Unfortunately, it's taken a little longer than expected since I currently have other games I'm playing to get a review out on them as well. But with that being said, let's start. So from the moment you start up the game, the first thing you notice is that, well, it looks and plays just like Breath of the Wild, with just some minor updates, which kind of turns into a good and bad thing, but I'll get to that part in a bit. After the intro, you dive right into the world and start your journey. You're quickly introduced to the new powers you get and the new shrines that are also in the game. You start off in the sky world, which I thought was pretty cool at first. After a couple tutorials and some more shrines, you start to make your descent down to Hyrule. Now, Hyrule is exactly how you remember it, but this time it's covered in this thing called Gloom that pretty much kills you when you step in it and lowers your overall health pool. Now, I thought this was cool and kept things a little interesting as far as the story goes, but to be honest, Zelda's stories aren't really the most in-depth story. I mean, come on, every game is pretty much you saving Zelda every single game. Like dang, even with all the training that you had in all those other games, you still need Link to constantly save you. It's just as bad as Mario having to constantly save Peach from Bowser. But I digress. Once you land on Hyrule, you're pretty much free to do anything you want. Like the freedom this game allows you to have is great. I can tackle any quest at any time in any order I want. Now I do suggest that you stick to where the game wants you to go, at least until you get your paraglider. Trust me, it will make things a lot easier. Plus you will need it to do a lot of the quests in the game. After you get the paraglider, my next suggestion is to do a lot of the shrines since it's the only way to level up your life and stamina. I started first off leveling my life until I felt like I had enough to survive. Then I started leveling up my stamina a bit so I can make it to places without always running out. And trust me, it goes by really fast. The world is probably the best part of the game in my opinion. It's still the same size as Breath of the Wild, but now they added a couple new areas as well to traverse through. The lands of Hyrule is still dangerous, but this time no machines and linos to walking around to kill you. Instead, they just have a bunch of hard trash mobs that will usually one-shot you if not careful. And unlike Breath of the Wild, the powers you get in this game are just decent enough. And I only found one of them a little useful, unlike the really cool powers that you got in the other game. Oh, and once again, they brought back the weapon durability. So you will be switching between weapons the whole game, which brings me to everybody's favorite part. Let's talk about the cons. Oh, so where do I start? Well, like I was saying in the beginning, this game looks and plays just like Breath of the Wild, just with some minor improvements. And since it felt like Breath of the Wild, it made me feel like I've been here before and done this before, and kind of made me not really want to do some of the main quest and side quests that they have in the game. My other complaint is the silent protagonist. Like, why have full-blown cutscenes with voice acting, but the only character that doesn't speak is Link? Like, it's really hard to get emotion across when all you're doing is reading a bunch of text across your screen. It just makes the game very silent, and the only things you hear from Link is his moans and groans while he battles the other silent mobs that are in the game. They really stuck to this old-school style, which isn't bad, but some voice acting would have really took this game a long way. My third complaint is the weapon durability. We hated it in the first game, but for some reason the developers decided to keep it and say, hey, this time around, let's make weapons break faster. It's a dumb feature and one that they really need to let go. Not all the time do I feel like switching the dope sword that I just got or the spear that I took my time finding in some cave just for it to break literally a couple seconds later. And now I'm forced to use a weapon that I don't like with a giant rock on it. Now, they do make it up by always giving you weapons to pick up, but I don't see a point in taking my time to go find new weapons in a cave or in some random place just for it to break. It's a dumb system, and I really wish that they would stop putting it in this game. My fourth complaint is the shrines. Holy crap, they get really boring, and with no other way to level up your health and stamina, it got really repetitive really quick. And with them having over 200 shrines, and a lot of them not really that interesting, I got bored doing them, and they just felt like a chore to do. I'm not sure why they took out the regular dungeons from the old games, but they really need to bring them back, or at least find a way to mix the two together. 
because just filling up the map with shrines gets stale after a while. Now I can sit here and rant about a lot of the stuff that the game doesn't do right, but overall I've been having fun with the game. Now I do feel like a lot of YouTubers and other sites hype this game up a lot, and even though it's a really good game, I don't think it's a masterpiece that everyone is making it seem to be. I will be putting out my review once I'm done with the game, so be on the lookout for that. And make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the content that I put out. Alright, you guys take care. Bye.